The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Well, we're going to talk about uh, these cell formation, the formation of these distinct or unique um, structures as a result of those properties, hydro hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity. So, direct your attention to the screen now, depending on the nature of, of lipids, depending on the precise conditions as well, there are three main types of lipid aggregates that can form when amphipathic lipids are mixed with water. Now, uh, the figure that we have on the screen right there, figure 13 at the bottom left hand corner, it shows us which structures can actually be produced by such interactions. So, micelles are spherical structures, like I said, that are arranged with their hydrophobic regions aggregated uh, or coalesced into the interior of a spherical shape or structure. And their hydrophobic regions are actually um, aggregated in this way to exclude or prevent contact with a hydrophilic interface like water. Now, micelle formation is actually favored when the head of the phospholipid has a cross-sectional area that is greater than that of the tail. So this structure will therefore be commonly seen in fatty acids and lysophospholipids, which have this sort of structure. So I'm going to direct your attention to, to figure 14, 14. I'm going to direct your attention to the top of that figure where we have three headings, amphipal shape, um, self-organized structure, and aggregate curvature. So what this diagram right here shows us is what structure is likely to be formed based on the shape of the amphipal based on the shape of the lipid, the phospholipid or the membrane lipid that is forming the structure. So when a me cell forms, like I said, the head of the phospholipid actually will have a cross-sectional area that is greater than that of the tail. And when that happens, a spherical structure is what is going to result. Now in the case of bilayers, two lipid monolayers or two single layers of uh, lipids will actually uh, form when the cross-sectional area of the head group and the tail group are very similar. So I'm talking about the hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic tail. When the cross-section of those two segments are somewhat similar, then you will see the formation of a bilayer. And that's what we have in the figure 14 right there, directing our attention to that part of the diagram. As you can see, because of the similarity in the cross-sectional areas of um, the head and the tail of that membrane lipid, a bilayer is what the structure is going to result, or the self-organized structure that results. Now, in vesicles, because the edges of a bilayer are actually exposed, so I'm talking about these edges right here, because those edges of a bilayer are exposed and they're in contact with water, the bilayer sheet is actually relatively unstable and it can spontaneously fold back on itself to form a hollow sphere that we call a vesicle. So in forming such a continuous interface, uh, the vesicle eliminates the exposed hydrophobic regions at the end of the bilayer and allows the bilayers to achieve maximum stability. So vesicle formation also results in the creation of an aqueous internal environment. So some of that aqueous environment is isolated or locked up in the middle of that vesicle. So the lipid bilayer is therefore a, a two-dimensional fluid just looking at everything we've discussed. So the lipid bilayer is actually the universal basis for all membrane structure and its properties are in large responsible for the properties that we observe in all of other cell membranes as a matter of fact. So molecules that have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic properties are termed amphipathic and this is a property that is distinctive of all membrane lipids. Okay, so let's move on.